Good morning from the Kerr Farm. Good morning, Smokey. Smokey said good morning. She said she slept well with the sheep last night. <laughs> Let's see who else is up this morning. Let's see who else. Uh-oh. I see some gargoosey. Pay no attention to my burn pile. Well, good morning, Goosey. Duck, 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 duck. This is her best friend, her wild Canadian goose that they normally mate and pair for life. So this is her best buddy who came last winter and never left. Let's see who else is up. Come on, Smokey, let's go check the sheep. Come on. Good morning, girls. Good morning. You are hungry. Hi, Polly. Polly says she really likes cookies. They are waiting for me to bake more cookies because they get what's either left or the broken ones. Say good morning from the Kerr Farm. Good morning. <clears throat> it's a little cool for uh, outside today. for a Tuesday, but we're gonna make the best of it. Right, Smokey? Smokey says she's gonna make the best of it. They are really waiting their bre for their breakfast. Girls, wanna come out later to do some more barn cleaning and we light a bonfire later, I'll bring you some extra cookies. She says, good morning, this is Cindy. Short for Cinderella. They're about due for haircuts, so in July we usually pull their fleece and it's called ruing. You pick it like cotton. You don't really shear Shetland sheep because they don't really have a lot of lanolin, which is what we like to make lotion out of. It makes your hands kind of slick. They don't really have greasy wool. Their wool's very dry. So <clears throat> we pick it like cotton and that's when I'm able to wash it gently and then I can card it which is like brushing your hair and then that's when I can spin it on the spinning wheel and so I'm looking forward to being able to have some new fleece and we have to get it before their fleece gets too dirty and they actually missed a shearing last year so they're really thick so they're gonna look really really skinny they're gonna look like they really had a diet I wish I could do that I wish I could have a haircut and then get really skinny. <laughs> and we're looking for a male, a ram right now to breed with them. But these girls are registered too. So it's like I've started my flocks all over again. Had Shetlands and sheep for a very long time. And I also raised uh, Suffolk Hamp Cross Market Lambs. We showed a lot of animals over the years. And so I thought it was time now that I finished school. Good morning, Polly. She knows I'm talking about her. She's so beautiful. She's the oldest you of the bunch. And she protects them. So whenever there's someone out there, maybe um, a coyote, since we don't have a donkey in there with them, or a guard dog, she'll stomp her feet. She's very protective of them. And she also has a baby. And her baby is right here. She's reaching through the fence. You guys have the whole pasture. Go out in the pasture. She's showing off. Are you trying to look pitiful this morning? You have the whole pasture. Go out in the pasture. They've got a whole new paddock out back. So we, we um, build different pastures, different paddocks, so they can go out and eat and graze and it doesn't wear it down. We call this intensive grazing management. And so they only get, <clears throat> they only get a short area and then we want to make sure we keep the grass or the hay nice for them so it has enough nutrients in there because they're ruminants and sheep are ruminants, which means they have four chambers to their stomach and um, one is only called the true chamber or the true stomach. And they have to chew so much grass 
or so much hay so they can get their cut and it's like a, it's like an enzyme in their stomach that allows things for them to digest so they have to have these things in addition to their food and this is their water trough she you are just really wanting attention today so their water trough outside it's kind of small but it'll hold quite a bit of water and that's her water trough we have to fill that up this morning and they're waiting on me. These are some of the old buckets that we have in here when I want to put um, minerals or salt because they also have to have vitamins just like we do, just like people do. And this is where we throw their hay and their feed goes in. This right here is when it was really cold. We put those in these buckets or troughs and they're heated so ice doesn't form. So there, she's showing you. <laughs> she's showing you what it off. You're showing them what it's all about, aren't you? This keeps their water from freezing. Oh, they must really want to see you guys today. Because normally, they like to run. As soon as I come out, they want to eat and then they want to run. Well, good morning, girls. And this is just a small pen that, we're, that um, we put the animals in when we first get them and when it's nice out. But we do have a really large barn. <clears throat> and it goes around to the other side. <clears throat> and... We have jugs in there. They're called lambing jugs, and that's where we have our babies. So the babies are usually born in the Easter in Easter time. They're usually born around Easter. This thing needs a paint job because it has not had animals in it for a while because I took time off. Um, I had all the animals went to live somewhere else, and we got rid of all of our animals. So Mrs. Kirk could go back to school, and so that way I could get my license, so I could come and and uh, be a teacher. And be with you guys today. And so Shetlands are really small. When they're babies, they're born. They're only they only weigh a couple of pounds, and it takes them about three years for the ewes to become full grown. And the largest that the ewes become, a ewes a girl, is about 85 to 100 pounds. That's all the more that they weigh. So they're actually really small. They they consider these uh, miniature sheep. And the rams usually only get to about 125 pounds. Now these girls don't have horns or pulled, and their horns will, will kind of turn, kind of do a, a little turn on both sides, and you might have seen those in movies. And um, these girls do not have pulls. That's actually inherited, that trait. And so these particular girls don't have it, but the boys generally do. Now, you really typically don't want horns on goats or sheep because they can use those to kind of um, butt or run into you, or they tear up buildings really bad. Well, good morning. They must really want to see you guys this morning. They're very curious of who I'm talking to. These are my students at school. Can you say hi, Trotwood Prep, 7th and 8th grade? Can you say good morning to my kids? Oh, they must really want to get to meet you. Hi, say good morning, Trotwood Prep Dragons. Yeah, good morning. And so the rams, oh, I'm sorry, girls, I spooked you. Oh, the goose might have spooked them because they come up to say hello. They come up actually to try to steal some of their little nibblings of food that might have got into their pen. But <clears throat> the rams and the sheep, the, the ewes and the sheep, so the ewes, the girl, the rams, the boy, they usually only, they generally live about 10 years. Um, and then babies are born usually around Easter time. And like I said, they're very, very small. It takes them a really long time to grow. And at one time, Mrs. Kerr had about 100, about 100 of these sheep at one time. And we showed them. We took them to the county fair. We took them to the state fairs. And we showed them in competitions. And they did actually really well. We actually did have grand champion animals, which means they were the best of the best of their breeds. And we're really proud of that because we really tried to take really good care of our animals. And it's kind of an art form in itself to be able to raise sheep especially these particular kind. We call these registered, which means we can trace their lineage or their heritage back to a very long way. So at least seven generations. And so I have papers and so they're called registered. If they weren't registered, that means we can't prove that they weren't pure blooded animals, that they were a pure blooded breed. So registration is really important, especially when you wanna show against other breeds or compete against other breeds. They eat um, pellets, 
and they eat some minerals. Pellets are like a really small little pressed feed that has a certain percentage of protein. And so they eat about 18% protein. And if you could see in the bottom of their trough, it looks like salt. And we can kind of, it's kind of like their vitamins that they need to be able to be healthy. And so this is a mixture of vitamins that I put in there last night for them to nibble on. And later, I'll hang a tire swing, an old tire swing, inside of their, like a car tire, inside of their outside play area, their outside shelter. And they'll be able to take, and you can see an old string 